the role of business in this country critical, uh, fundamental to the to the country's well-being and its future, to the creation of jobs. Uh, but business has taken such a voice in this town, in this swamp, that you are the only countervailing influence to that dominance of uh, U.S. multinationals in this uh, country. Uh, and it's uh, the country owes you a great debt on so much, but on that in uh, particular. Well, and, it's and, very and, interesting. It's well put. It's true. I, and you have focused from June uh, 16th of 2015 uh, on the relationship of our borders, our sovereignty, our economy, uh, whether you're looking at the opiate uh, uh, crisis in this country or the, the import of drugs that all crosses that border. You're being pushed back uh, against by the leadership of the House and the Senate on the issue of funding a wall in its entirety. Uh, you have been pushed back against uh, talking about changing all of those trade agreements. Again, all the external issues that are so critical to the country's uh, future, your vision for this country. Uh, how, how in the world are we going to be able to deal with all of these issues if you, if you cannot bring the Republican Party together? I really think they're coming along. I, I really do. I think they are coming along. One thing you didn't mention, which you will mention, and I know you talk about it, is mm -hmm. the power of the pharmaceutical companies. Oh, yes. We pay so much more for the same pill, prescription drugs, than other countries. You go to Canada. People go to Canada to buy prescriptions. We pay for the exact same pill, made from the same plant, the same company. We pay, in many cases, many, many times more than they're paying in other countries. Right. So we're subsidizing the world in terms of prescription drugs. It's We're ridiculous. And it's going to stop. The problem I have is these companies give so much, I mean, the contributions are massive, just massive, the amount. But we do have, there are a lot of good people that are seeing what's going on. And I think right. we'll be successful in that. Next week, I'm going to be declaring an emergency, a national emergency on drugs. The opioid is a, a tremendous emergency. What's going on there? Uh, the drugs pouring into the country have gotten, and I tell you what, we've we've made a big impact. But right. still, we need the wall. You know, part of the reason we need the wall is for drugs. For drugs. For getting even about right. people. We need a wall for drugs, and the wall's coming along. You know, we're building uh, right now prototypes. We right. have six prototypes. I'm going to be looking at them over the next three weeks. I'm Do you have a down. favorite yet? Well, you know, it's funny. It's very interesting. I'm almost glad you asked because it's little. It's actually pretty easy to understand. You think of a wall as a wall. Yeah. But honestly, you do need some see-through ability because you don't know who's, if you do pure concrete, which is a wall, then you can't see who's on the other side. You know, you have a wall that's this thick and you can't see who's on the other side. So we're going to need some see-through abilities. So I'm going to be going down. We actually have six prototypes that are all very top of the line, uh, done with Homeland Security. We have some incredible people. If you look at the Border Patrol, if you look at the ICE agents, and I've had the Tough people. Job. But I've had the people at that level. Those are the people. They know so much. They know more than anybody. And they also know the wall and the wall systems. And we're going to take a look at the wall, and we're going to get it built, and uh, it's going to be... It's going to be quite the wall. It's going to be very effective. You're obviously enthused about what you're going to get done. Uh, you, you've got to be immensely gratified at what you've been able to do, often with a recalcitrant uh, Congress and Senate. Uh, going forward, there's another wall, and there's a wall that's just fallen uh, between uh, the American public, the Democratic National Committee, uh, and Hillary Clinton's right. campaign. Right. They funded something called the Trump dossier, yeah. Uh, which they ballyhooed for some time. Uh, we now know who paid for it. Yep. The DNC and Hillary Clinton and one as yet unnamed Republican. That's uh, right. You want to? Wonder who that might be. Uh, you, do you have a sense? I think of I know, but you know, I'll let them find out. They're going to find out eventually, just like they did. Don't forget, Hillary Clinton totally denied this. She right. didn't know anything. She knew nothing. All of a sudden, it found out. What I was amazed at, it's almost $6 million that they paid, and it's totally discredited. It's a total phony. I call it fake right. news. Uh, it's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. I think her word that she likes to use that's so serviceable about that dossier, yeah. Yeah, right. it debunked. It's been debunked. Well, and, and then uh, I understand recently she said, well, opposition research, opposition research is very standard. So 
You know, it's very interesting. Uh, she denied it. Her own people denied it. Everybody denied it. And now they're sort of uh, scooting around trying to figure out what to say. So they spent, if you think of it, almost $6 million on something like that. And uh, I think, honestly, I just think it's a disgrace. And contemporaneously, uh, suddenly the House Intelligence Committee, the House Oversight Committee are turning to the Democratic Party and talking about, not talking about, but beginning the investigation of something called collusion with the Russians. That's the uh, real collusion. Believe me. Your thoughts? There was no collusion on my side, I can tell you that. Right. Everybody knew it. You knew it because you were saying yep. it when it was uh, not in vogue. But uh, I always said, and I had no idea how right I was because I didn't realize it would be to this extent. Right. But I always said this was an excuse for losing the election put out by the Democrats, and that's what it was. But then when you hear the kind of money they spent, and when you see all of the things about Podesta, and you see all of the relationships that they actually have with Russia, and you see in ours, you know, one thing that is interesting, and I have to say, even the Democrats, they walk out of those meetings and they say, no, there is no collusion, and we haven't found any yet, but we'll keep going. Right. A wonderful man came to my office uh, a week ago, a very highly respected man, and he sat down and he said, you know, it's been very unfair. From the day you have been president, you've been under this little veil of Russia, Russia, Russia. Mm -hmm. Now, with all of this being said, I want to say this. I think it would be great if we got along with Russia. I don't think there's anything wrong with getting, you know, they are a power, they're a nuclear power. I think we could have a good relationship. I think the North Korean situation would be easier settled. I just spoke to the president of China. Right. I congratulated him on his big right. victory. But it would be wonderful if we could speak to China and Russia, because China is helping us, and maybe Russia is going through the other way and hurting what we're getting. I mean, when I say maybe, I think I know exactly what I'm talking about. If we had a relationship with Russia, that would be a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, relationships, uh, you were criticized for even trying to uh, uh, court, if you will, President Xi of China. Uh, everyone, the so-called uh, intelligentsia of this uh, country's foreign yeah, policy yeah. establishment, said you're, you're wasting your time. It, it just can't be done. And obviously, you've made significant uh, progress with him. And uh, Just spoke to him a few minutes ago, just before I walked into the room. Uh, you know, something has been given to him that's never been, right. it's really virtually never happened in China. He's been given powers that nobody's... And ever, written, into the, now, written into the Constitution. Written into, he's a, a powerful man. I happen to think he's a very good person. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, he represents China. I represent the USA. So, you know, there's going to always be conflict, but uh, we have a very good relationship. People say we have the right. best relationship of any president-president, because... President, He's called president also. Now some people might call him the king of China, yeah, right. but he's called president. But we have a very good relationship, and that's a positive thing. And it would be good to have that relationship with Russia and other countries, too. Hopefully the, the whole world. Uh, in, anything to report uh, uh, to America on your conversation with President Xi? Um, no, but I'll be going there in two weeks, right. and we'll go in to Beijing and other places, wherever he'd like to take me, right. and we'll be spending two days there, and we're going also to Japan and South Korea, uh, and it will be, I think, uh, hopefully it's historic and positive, and we have to solve the North Korea problem. Right. It's a very big problem. It should have never been given to me. This should have been solved long before I came to office, when it would have been easier to solve. Right. But it was given to me, and I get it solved. I solve problems. I'm very happy with the way the markets are going. I'm very happy with, you know, all of the regulation cuts and all of the things we've done, and that's what's driving the market.